Well, striking tonight, an incumbent governor in such a tight race to keep his job. For a breakdown, here's Republican analyst Christine Rodonio and Democratic analyst Art Turner. So, Christine, starting with you, what do you make of this celebratory speech by Governor Rauner when there's 85% of precincts reporting and yet no concession speech from his rival? Right. I think they're, they're thinking it's likely that they'll win. But I think it's kind of indicative of his style of, you know, just get right in there and in your face and and declare victory and, uh, you know, start the November campaign. So let's turn back to the third congressional district. And we heard there from Marie Newman, and she said she doesn't mind making this painful for Dan <laughs> Lipinski tonight. So when you hear something like that, we've heard a couple biting comments tonight, yes. but it, it is a very close race it still at indeed. this point. Yeah. What do you think? Well, it is indeed. I, I still think, and I'm going out on a limb because there's still votes to be counted, I think that Lipinski ekes it out and for some of the same reason that um, Tony Preckwinkle did. Governor Rauner realizing he needs to make some changes. What do you think the strategy is going to be for J.B. Pritzker when he goes up against now declared Rauner? I think he's going to have to find a way to get the those millennials and interested Democrats that did not vote in this primary. With some of the controversy that surrounded J.B. Pritzker in the last few months, including the statements he made about Secretary of State Jesse White, what do you think this turnout, these results say about the African-American voters who, at least some of them likely, went to the polls and still voted for him? Right. Well, he definitely did make an effort to try to repair um, damage from those comments. So to some degree, that was successful. But they say it's not going to hurt middle class, but in order to really raise revenue, a graduated tax is going to have to reach down into those people making 120, 140, which now is middle class. So that'll, that will come up. What are your rates going to be? And so to think that that message or that issue is going to come from two people who make billions of dollars. Yes. What about that? Yeah, well, exactly. J.B. Pritzker with 44 percent, Daniel Biss with 27, and Chris Kennedy in third place there with 25. So, Christine, when you look at this on the Democratic side, J.B. Pritzker, he has been a front runner, of course, but there was a lot of question as to whether that gap would narrow with these two other candidates. Yeah, well, obviously, I think his money, the institutional support um, is going to carry him through. But again, you look at if you combine the two numbers of of the challengers. If there had been only one, you, you wonder what it would have looked like. So, Jim, as we hear another round of applause out there, take us through some of the uh, more criticized issues and decisions that Governor Rauner has made that has potentially contributed to this tight race that we're seeing tonight. Well, he angered a lot of conservatives when he expanded uh, abortion. Barrios, the incumbent, with 94% of precincts reporting, he had just 34%, while Kagi had 45%, and third there, Andrea Ryla with 21%. Let's go to Roseanne Tejas. She joins us from Fritz Kagi's campaign at Apollo's on Cermak in the Little Village neighborhood tonight. Roseanne.